Hello, welcome to HITC Sport. All right, let's get into it. Social media can be a great tool. Twitter is where I ask people about my skits. Instagram is where I show myself jumping in a bin. But uh, for footballers and football clubs, can be a bit of a problem. Let's take a look at every Premier League club's worst moment on social media. All right, let's crack on. Arsenal. All right. Where do we start with Arsenal on social media? Right, it's a bit embarrassing when your club record signing has to correct his own club social media team after they tagged him on Instagram as Ainsley Maitland Niles. Let's, he is a 70 million pound player, the most expensive import in the history of your club. Why are you confusing him with a makeshift right back whose mother is banned from the training ground? Alex Oxley Chamberlain likes Arsenal fan TV tweet calling for Arsenal Wenger to leave the club. Christ, can you imagine this man's heart rate when he realized what he'd done? You have just accidentally liked the post calling for the dismissal of your goddamn employer. The man responds responsible for your career. I didn't mean to like that post earlier, obviously. Didn't even realize I had. Chamberlain probably hasn't been that uncomfortable since he was asked for an honest critique of a Little Mix album. Oh yeah, Perry, I love your music. It doesn't sound like three cats being strangled in the toilet. But I'm gonna go with this one. Arsenal captain Xhaka's wife, Leonardo Lacage, locks Instagram account after receiving death threats from sick fans. Yeah, seems sensible. Your captain puts in a sluggish performance against Crystal Palace. And so you decide to bombard his wife with death threats online. What? Just why? Because one man performed badly at work? Well, lads, if you walk into a coffee shop and the barista serves you a warm cup of horse piss, would you then A. Complain to the owner, B. Demand your money back, or C. Attack his wife and infant child online? If you pick C, then congrats! You're the definition of a f psychopath and should probably be chucked behind bars. Ask the villa. This is why footballers should stay off social media forever. Just cancel your Twitter. Chuck the Instagram in a bin. It only leads to trouble. Even when you have the right intentions. Listen, you all know what I think of Jack Grealish. He's a walking tub of melted brill cream with a soul made out of blocks of wood. But um... Oh, lads. Daniel Crowley, 10. Buzzing to score my first goal for Birmingham City and get through to the next round. That was for you and your family, bro. Benica Phoebe. Lovely. A really nice touching show of support for a former teammate who's just lost his infant daughter to cancer. Great. Really well done, Daniel Crowley. Let's have a look at... Uh, at the comments. Jack Grealish, sick face. Now, I, I can see what happened here, all right? Grealish sees the word Birmingham and so publishes a feeling sick emoji. I mean, of course, he's the Villa captain and earlier this year was subjected to a Birmingham fan punching him in the head, but oh God, he really should have read the rest of the message. It's like the internet equivalent of turning by a funeral and getting sick in the bastard coffin. But no, obviously, the worst social media moment in Aston Villa's history is Julian Lascott reacting to a diabolical defensive performance in a 6-0 home defeat to Liverpool by tweeting out a photo of his car. Now fair enough, Ari. Point proven. You're reacting to abuse from the working class peasants who pay your wages with a belly shaped flex. Well, great, that's a, a bit like walking up to a homeless person and flashing a Rolex in their face. But then to deny it and pretend that you pocket tweeted whilst driving. I'm sorry, Lascott, unless you have a bionic hand strapped to your hip, then please. That is utter horse testicles. Bournemouth. Uh, this is just embarrassing. Just last month, in preparation for a trip to Stamford Bridge, Bournemouth accidentally photoshopped Simon Francis' body onto Steve Cook's. How embarrassing! Isn't it? Brighton. Right, if you lose a game of football, you should probably accept it with a modicum of dignity and professionalism. Uh, now, let's go back to January 2019. Brighton lose to Liverpool by just the one goal, and this happens. Sorry, Man City fans, but the FA have got their back. Title is done. Disgrace. As it happens, no, uh, Brighton, the... The title wasn't done. City would win it four months later. You should remember, they lifted the title at your own goddamn stadium. Burnley. Andre Gray, sorry for homophobic tweet calling for gay people to burn and die. Well, this isn't a good look. Twice, why does every footballer who dates a Little Mix member end up embarrassing themselves on social media? Is it just the, you know, spending time with this headache-inducing band of misfits? Does that somehow puncture your brain? To be fair, Gray wrote those tweets eight years ago, but Jesus, uh, as far as social media gaffes go, this is up there with the worst. Is it me or are there gays everywhere? Hashtag burn, hashtag die, hashtag makes me sick. Oh, good lord. The only way those tweets wouldn't have come back to haunt that man is if the Mayans were right and the world ended in 2012. I mean, accidentally liking a Venger uh, tweet is bad. Tweeting a photo of a car, not great. But how do you come back from advocating the purge of homosexuals? If who's up to grey in 2012, half the TV chat shows wouldn't exist. But don't worry, he, he quickly got a character reference from a former teammate. Uh, Joey Barton. Who hasn't said dumb things when they were young? Give the lad a break. It was years ago when he said this. He was young and dumb. Joey Barton. I mean, to be fair, to someone like Joey Barton, teenage indiscretions like this would be considered mild. His idea of being young and dumb included stubbing out a lit cigar in someone's left eyeball. Chelsea. What better way is there to sum up Chelsea fans' entitled attitude towards their evolving door status of managers than for the fact that Lampard out 
was actually trending after his first bastard press conference. But no, for Chelsea, step forward to Jadon Sancho from 2012. Written in May 2013. Champions of Europe, we know who we are. Now, nothing wrong with this. I mean, obviously most Chelsea fans are now making a mess of their pants at the very thought that England's hottest young talent is a blue at heart. But then Sancho comes out and claims that that Twitter account isn't actually his at all. Jaden, please, are you seriously suggesting someone made an account impersonating you when you were 12 years old? There are many weird people in this world. People who look like they sniff seats on the bus. But this is just next level strange. Are you really trying to pretend that someone called Young Origiano was secretly uploading photos of prepubescent you in 2012? Crystal Palace. Well, I could go for the James McCarthy announcement video, which was so hideously unfunny, I almost felt my brain melt into sticky fudge. A bit like what happens whenever I make it past the Big Bang 3's opening credits. But no, here's Wayne Hennessy making a dodgy salute, and a German Max Meyer taking the photograph, and then pleases his innocence by, by pretending to be ignorant of World War II. How? Everton, right. Remember when Everton's first team lost to Liverpool's kids in the FA Cup earlier this month? This was their best chance to win a derby game at Anfield in over 20 years. They were a bunch of lightweight teenagers and Everton still lost. Understandably, Toffee's fans weren't happy and so one of them engaged in an Instagram kerfuffle with Fabian Delph. Embarrassing you. If you was in front of me now, you wouldn't say a word. Wanna f***ing bet? Not a word. Bring the other 13 shithouses from Sunday and I'll tell you, you're all a f***ing disgrace, no problem. You'd ask for a picture. Christ, does, does Delph actually want to pose for a selfie with this man? Christ, just, just, just let it go. By the way, I, at this point, the, the fan is most definitely down the pub with about 40 lads crowded around his phone. Hell, you've been here half a season and you played about five minutes. Who the f*** are you? You're a disgrace, lad, and you're the gobshite behind your phone sending abuse. Fabian, why are you even engaging in an internet spat with a disgruntled fan? It is essentially like yelling at the wall. Lester, yeah, it's always a tough one when old tweets resurface. Lester is Hamza Chaudhuri, a wanted man in Newcastle for crimes against Matt Ritchie's leg, was forced to apologise for these controversial tweets back in 13 and 14. I'm not gonna read them out, because... They're pretty bad. All I'll say is this. Hanzo Tudori is cancelled! Liverpool. Paul Konczewski's mother, Carol Brands, LFC fans, Scouse Gum and Facebook Tourette. Oh, good Christ. To all you Liverpool Scouse Gum out there, never mind the cockney <laughs> Take a real look at your team, stop living off the path, that team are shit, anyone made mistake, it's the cockney <laughs> never should have left for them. Now, like your average 50 year old housewife, Mrs. Konczewski probably thought she would have a reach of about 20 people. But no, as a, as a mother of a famous footballer, at one of the biggest clubs on the planet, this was a... This was always going to find its way into the public domain. Poor old Paul, this was the last thing he needed. I'm guessing for Christmas he probably had his mother's laptop stuffed in a bin. Man City. Francesco Totti admits Manchester City's tweet inspired him to score. Look, professional footballers don't need any more help to score. If your club's Twitter page is actively spurring them on to try harder against your team that, oh, you know you've messed up somewhere. Back in October 2014, some City social media manager stuck this one up and one night before Roma came to town. We're looking forward to hosting you, Roma, and a legendary player such as Totti. He's never scored in England, has he? One day later. Man United. Poor old Darren Gibson. Back in April 2011, just two days before a Champions League semi-final, he probably thought it was safe to set up a Twitter account. It's not like United were doing badly. His account lasted just two hours before deleting it. According to Rio, Darren Gibson says he came on to see what the lads were up to. He came off it because he couldn't be bothered, not for any other reason. Right, uh, it, it wouldn't have anything to do with these tweets he received, was it? Nothing would make me happier than if we sold you this summer. You're probably a nice bloke, but an awful footballer. You offer nothing to United. Do us all a favour and hand in the transfer request, you spud. Oi, you are a rubbish player. Go to a different club from Man United. Teamed all the hard work, keeping possession, and you hit Rosette every f***ing time. You are an abysmal excuse for a footballer. You're a one-trick pony. A shit one of that. What Fergie sees in you, I don't know. Christ, no wonder he quit. Newcastle. Newcastle's Harris Vukic apologises for untimely selfie taken on a plane. This was just blatant ignorance. A classic example of a footballer living life with his brain firmly splattered on the kitchen table. In July 2014, two devoted Newcastle fans had lost their lives on board Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 to watch their beloved club in a pre-season tour. Two days later, Harris Vukic tweets this. New Zealand, here we come. Paul Dummett, pre-season, same time. Oh, the timing of that. Norwich. So glad I've stayed loyal as an Arsenal fan. Hashtag ballers. Yeah, there you have it. A, a tweet from a 14-year-old Todd Cantwell reaffirming his lifelong commitment to Arsenal. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't find many good examples for Norwich. Sheffield United. Sheffield United goalkeeper Dean Henderson deletes Twitter account after arguing with the Sheffield Wednesday fan. Long story short, it didn't go anywhere and resulted in Henderson being forced to delete his account. Waste of time. Southampton. Remember back in May 2014 when as part of a social media initiative, Southampton fans were all supplied with masks 
to cheer on their favourite footballers. There were about 1,500 Ricky Lamberts on show that afternoon. It was just weird. Tottenham, there are ways to leave football clubs. Not like this. Not by getting angry on Twitter like a hormonal spoiled brat. But no, Darren Bent was desperate to leave Spurs. Daniel Levy wasn't allowing him. Do I want to join Hull City? No. Do I want to join Stoke? No. Do I want to join Sunderland? Yes. So stop around, Levy. Oh, Darren. Watford. Yeah, this is the moment we practically saw a social media manager being fired on the spot. It started off with this. Gary Lineker complaining about the club's revolving door policy and their decision to sack yet another manager. Absurd decision, in my opinion, by Watford to fire Marco Silva after his first bad run. He'll be stopped up very quickly and Watford will almost certainly get someone less talented. One year later, Watford finally replied. This aged well. Oh no. Yes, football can and will prove us wrong on many occasions and I've already stated that may be the case again here. But the sacking of managers is not something I often support and I do find this tweet rather disrespectful of your former manager. Right. This is the moment the Watford CEO was forced to step in. Sorry, get out of No offense meant to anyone. They got carried away celebrating when they realized the head coach had been with us for a whole year. I might be going through more social media managers and head coaches soon. Yeah, it was a bit awkward. West Ham. David Gold is a man who should not be let anywhere near a laptop. Let's go over the time when he welcomed Pedro Niang to the club with a photo of Angelo Bonna. Wolves. Here's a here's a, a wolf celebrated a home draw with Newcastle last season. We all love Big Willie. Christ, don't let Andre Gracie tweet that. Anyway, that's the end of the video, guys. Let me know what was the worst social media at your club. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to go like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.